All right, so let's get started. So in the process of title, there are many players that are involved. You've got the actual closer that does the physical process. You've got a title sales rep who does the schmoozing. Let's face it, you guys all go out and do the schmoozing, and that's a very key element. Then you've got management that controls all the activity. And then there is a person called the underwriter, and the underwriter is the one that assumes the ultimate risk that they stand behind the policy that is actually underwritten by the insurance company, all right? So they are the ones that are responsible for finding all of the, and I'm going to finger quote for those of you at home, you guys here can see it, issues, all right? They have, they are the ones that do the title searches, they're the ones that check all the tax records and court records and things of that nature. Um, so they are the ones that are the one, uh, that are financially at risk. And I don't mean them personally, but I mean they're the ones that are putting the company financially at risk. It is their word that the insurance company is taking when they underwrite a insurance policy. All right, so they're the ones that they also agree to defend the policy in court if there's ever a reason that a title policy has a claim filed against it. So they kind of serve two purposes. One is they are the ones responsible for finding all the defects and they are the ones that are kind of binding the company to go to the court to defend their actions. So an underwriter typically can work for a title company or the actual insurer themselves. Uh, there are people out there that work independently that get subcontracted from some of the smaller title companies. They're the ones to make, they're checking all of the property to ensure the ownership, the rights, anything that can be found or disavowed by the insurance policy. They are the ones that research the claim. Uh, not the claim, I'm sorry, I misspoke. I was thinking ahead. They are the ones that, in, uh, that review the chain of title to make sure that there is what we call an unbroken chain of title. If there is a broken chain or a cloud, they are the ones that are responsible for researching that cloud to either clarify it, get rid of it, or potentially make it disavowed on the insurance policy. So some of the things that they would be looking for are like legal descriptions uh, to make sure that the property that's being sold is the one in fact recorded so that we have the same poli pro property being sold. Don't look at me like that, man. I've seen that happen before where different legal addresses have come up and that causes a whole heart, heart problem, all right? <clears throat> they are the ones that are looking for any of the current liens or potentially any liens in the past that maybe there's not a satisfaction recorded. Certainly you hope you wouldn't see that because that would have been a problem at that closing, but it's come up before. They're also looking for any judgments against the seller uh, that could potentially affect the priority of a new lien coming on or the buyer as well, all right? They are trying to find if there's any been omitted errors in the process, and that's with an H, not errors, hairs. I don't know how, to, that's a hard way to distinguish that in, ver, in verbiage, isn't it? Uh, any past errors to the claim to the title any marital rights could have been an issue uh, in Indiana. You know, both parties typically sign. Many other states uh, follow the same order. Some states do not have that issue. If there were minors involved, potentially through an estate. <clears throat> so these are some of the things that the title company is going to be looking for. They are going to ensure that there is a clear title so that the seller can pass the piece of real property to the buyer with the least minimal risk to the insurance company and 
Maybe I should have said them first. Least risk to the buyers and sellers and then the insurance company, all right? Um, the underwriter may actually look at other documents for sources of data to resolve any problems. Like I said, they could be looking at court records if there's a judgment uh, against a person. They could be looking at other civil court matters like estates to make sure the estate was filed correctly and that all of the heirs of that estate had signed off. Uh, they are responsible for reviewing all of these and anything found in that chain, all right? Um, they could create some exclusions, and that's a better word than disavow. Uh, I didn't want to use that back then, but now we get to the word. If there are things they find that can't be resolved or they just can't get it 100%, they could have exclusions to the policy, which are extremely important that agents, buyers and sellers, and potentially you need to understand that there could be some things that are excluded, like an encroachment from a neighbor, uh, fence lines, sheds, things of that nature, which could include airspace encroachment, by the way, easements, that could be an issue that is on that property that they may exclude. So there's all kinds of things that this underwriter does. Basically, the underwriter is the linchpin, all right? You guys are out there selling the product, but understand that there is a person behind the scenes that is very instrumental in making sure that whatever you're selling actually is sellable, all right? So that's what the underwriter does at a basic 30,000 kind of foot view that they cover, all right? If you have any questions at home, feel free. You can email me at raymond at realuniversity.com. Uh, let's keep moving on.